Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Crypto Warehouse. It's the 28th of March, 11 a.m. Central European time, 10 o'clock in the UK. I am Mike and I'm hopefully going to get through that menu of items on the right hand side in less than an hour or if not, then a couple of minutes over. A big thank you, by the way, before we begin to everybody that has oh, well joined us last night. We had, I think, in the end, about 8,000 people uh, come onto the stream. We spent an hour. We spent 45 minutes talking to Samai. We spent 15 minutes doing a Pepe giveaway. And all in all, it's the kind of stream that we want to do every once in a while. An educational stream where people can come and watch. Experts talk about what they know best. And in this instance, we were talking about crypto regulation, how regulators work, how Samai sees the you know crypto in the future and things like that so I think it went very well we've had some very good feedback and the Pepe giveaway I haven't sent the Pepe out yet I am running late today I've already recorded a video about Zeus Network this morning which is going to go up this afternoon so I am running late I will get it done just not just not yet uh, good morning Jesse Jesse is in chat good morning to Mags good morning to Hidden Agendas and of course, Kishan, good morning to you all. I hope you're all doing well. So what we're going to do today? Well, first of all, we're going to have a quick look at the markets. We're going to have a look at some X files. We're then going to look at LBTC. We're going to look at El Salvador and their dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. How well is it going for them? We're going to look at Ondo and what Ondo is doing BlackRock. We're going to talk about ETH getting back to $4,000. We're going to talk about ADA. There is an ADA struggle going on. And the final one at the bottom is the AI merger. And as you can see, the topic of the show today is AI told you so. Now, I think I missed a calling in life. I should have gone and worked for one of these tabloid newspapers coming up with headlines because that's where I think my, my skill set lies. So I told you so. And I told you so on this very stream yesterday or the day before that this is the kind of thing we're going to see in the future. And that is that projects and blockchains are going to merge. After a con uh, an expansion of any industry, there is contraction and consolidation. Now, this is the not the first of many. We've seen Helium move onto the Solana blockchain. We've seen it in the past, but for me, this is the big one. So we're going to go through that. And I know it's at the end of the show, but we have a lot to get through, and I think it's going to end up being my final thoughts as well. Uh, Mags, do not worry that you missed it. It was the, the, it was 45 minutes of real, in my opinion, it was really good education. Um, so if you do get a chance to watch it, the, the, the stream was an hour and a half. Just watch the 45 minutes with Sam I. That's what I would I'd do anyway. There's no point in watching the giveaway. It was really good episode it's very difficult to gauge how good somebody is until they come on stream and as soon as i heard sam i start talking about uh, crypto and regulations i decided to try and like throw in more curveballs than we agreed before the show um but she was just very very good i was very very impressed so before we get into the x files then let's have a look at the markets we've been saying all along the etfs are going to keep buying up the dips and if the ETFs don't buy up the dips, everybody else buys up the dips. The dips get done. That's what we need to, uh, to, to think. 70,600 is where we are at today. I think we're at 69 and change yesterday. So we've come up a little bit. Uh, good morning, bullish bull. Uh, you had an airdrop of Mew. Yeah, I saw a lot of people got 22,222,222 Mew sent to them today. I checked. I haven't been given any Mew. I'm going to stick with my when. That's as close to a cat meme as I'm going to get. So 70,600 uh, 70, for Bitcoin. Market cap, 2.66 trillion, up 1%. Volume steady, 120 billion. Bitcoin dominance is moving up 52.3%. Remember, if you are a fan of Ben Cowan, Ben Cowan I like to call a Bitcoin psychopath. He's all about the Bitcoin. He believes that we are going to go to 60% Bitcoin dominance. Uh, good morning, Tata. Welcome to the stream. Um, I think 
60% in this current market with the number of coins that we've got is a touch high. If you take out the stable coins, then yes, I do think we'll hit 60%. But on this screen in front of you, I think the most we'll get to is 57%, 58% at a touch. So then, where are we? What's gained, what's lost? Bitcoin Cash is up, Doge is up. Remember, I think Doge at 19 cents was a good sell. Now, why it was a good sell was because it retraced from 19 cents and 19 cents is a really tough level for Doge. It's at now at 20 cents. Maybe tomorrow, if I do a stream tomorrow, I'll look at Dogecoin as well because now it's broken above that. If it holds 20, 21 st uh, cents, the next step up, there's a few of them, but the next step up would be about 31 cents. And that's from recollection of doing the, the TA on this weeks ago. Uh, but Dogecoin could start to move, especially if people believe Elon Musk. He's now come out and talked about everything X. Uh, Pendle is up. Singularity is up. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Ondo is up. Again, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, the graph, are we? Lots of AR-related coins are up today because of the bombshell news, which we're going to cover at the end of the show. Not many losers. ICP is down a touch. Remember what I said about ICP. ICP was one of the picks from Jake. He said, go and buy these three coins. These are the three coins that have pumped. If you'd have bought ICP when he told you to buy ICP, you would already be down almost 6%. So ICP, I think, needs a little bit of a retracement. I don't think it needs to come down too much further. $17, $16, 50 something like that. Just a 7 or 8% retracement is fine, and then it can carry on. Remember, it's up, it's up 46% on the last seven days and if you go back a little bit further it's up about 90 percent or 80 percent it's absolutely flown mantle is down a touch lido phantom world coin beam not really a lot down i mean dog with hat is still over three dollars i can't believe it's got a three billion dollar market cap but there we go shows what i know about crypto when these meme coins get to a three billion dollar market cap so that's really it from the markets we do have a lot of x files to go through and the reason is that in a bull market you have to adapt the stream to react to the amount of news some days we don't have a lot and we spend a lot of time talking about articles other days we have a lot of news that i have to get through now i'm not going to cover this one too much because i've made a video about it this morning already zeus network was one of the tokens which uh, people voted for on the Jupiter DAO. It is launching its token on the 4th of April. 4th of April, which is what? A week today. A week today, you'll be able to go and claim the tokens. It's roughly one token for every four Jupiter tokens. So if you have a thousand Jupiter tokens, you'll get 250 Zeus, something like that anyway. I've, that's what I've worked out in my head. Market cap wise, that airdrop could be worth anywhere between 10 and 30 cents, maybe even 35 cents per token. So for one of 12 airdrops, it's not bad at all. Again, I've made a video about this and I'm going to put the video up today. So I'm not going to spend too long talking about that one. But just to know, I am keeping an eye on Jupiter, I'm keeping an eye on the airdrops. I've not made any videos about Jupiter in a while simply because there hasn't really been that much news. Now then, who would have thought that Senator Cynthia Lummis speaking at a Bitcoin conference, who would have thought that Cynthia Lummis and Bitcoin would be mentioned in the same sentence? If you'd have told me that six years ago, I would have called you Jim Cramer. I would have called you crazy. But there we are. Uh, she is talking at the Bitcoin Policy Summit in DC about the importance of Bitcoin mining in the US. She knows, as do most of the Republicans, for some reason the Democrats are against it. She knows that the amount of revenue that can be generated from Bitcoin over the next 20, 30, 50 years is, is incredibly high. The higher the price of Bitcoin, the more revenue that miners uh, generate, the more profits they pay, the more tax the American government want, uh, gets. And that's what they care about. And that's what Donald Trump cares about. If Donald Trump is explained in simple terms how crypto can make America billions and billions of dollars a year in tax, 
guess what? He will be all over it. And that isn't a bad thing. That is not a bad thing because taxes are acceptance. Acceptance that crypto is here to stay. And that's where we want to be. All these things that we're talking about on here were unimaginable six years ago. ETFs, crypto banks, even crypto cards, crypto debit cards, senators talking at Bitcoin conferences, <clears throat> the head of Japanese, um, sorry, the, the, the governmental head of technology in Japan talking at NFT conferences. They're unheard of. We wouldn't have thought this would have happened five or six years ago. You blink and this is where we are. As I say all the time, crypto is nowhere than everywhere at once. And that's what happened with the internet. That's what's going to happen with crypto. You're going to see crypto on TV, on TV adverts, in films, in shows. You're going to see it within the next two years. And then it's just going to be matter of fact. And over the next six months, you're going to get people saying, you know a bit about Bitcoin or you know a bit about crypto or should I go and buy Pepe or whatever. <clears throat> it just happens and it happens very quickly. Adoption comes very slowly then all at once. And that's what we're going to see. Now, I don't agree with this tweet at all. I think this tweet is not the right attitude, in my opinion. We are all in the same industry. We are all in the same boat. And this gentleman here is pegging holes in the bottom of the boat. Max Kaiser last night said that he agrees with the SEC and everything apart from Bitcoin is a security and should be treated like a security. It's this cultish mentality, and that's cultish with an L, mentality that doesn't do anybody any favors. Dodgy has pointed out Solana won't be able to handle the bull run, slaps 800,000 plus validators and none of them know how to run a node. Y'all need help. The Ethereum network has been struggling and missing blocks for the past few epochs. Core devs are investigating, but it's best to monitor your nodes closely. These are the missed blocks. Crypto is a new industry. It is new technology. Ethereum is less than 10 years old. Solana is less than 10 years old. It's a new industry. If people were around when the internet first started and you had a dial-up modem and your line dropped every time somebody called you, you wouldn't complain about a few missed blocks. And this isn't just having a go at, at Dodgy for pointing this out. This is people who slate Solana, people who slate Ethereum, people who slate Bitcoin. They're all equally as guilty and all they're doing is damaging the reputation of crypto. It needs to stop. This is going to happen. And it's probably going to happen for the next two or three years because it's a new technology. That's why you have 50,000 Ethereum developers. This is why you have 3,000, 4,000 Solana developers. They are constantly building out the blockchain. You're, you, you, you're walking into a restaurant to buy a meal and the restaurant is still painting the walls and putting the windows in. That's how early you are. And people keep saying, oh, we're still early, we're still early. We are, we are early. We were early six years ago. Last week, we're early today. We're early by the end of the year. This doesn't really start until 2026, 2027. That's how early you are. Uh, what do I think about Waves? I haven't really studied it in any great depth, in all honesty. I haven't made a video about it either. It's not come up on my radar and it hasn't got... I've not seen too much of a buzz on X about it either. Normally, I make videos based on the trending things which are up and coming. I've heard of Waves but I haven't made a video about it. Maybe I will, maybe I will. I've got to make a video about Flux because there's a gentleman in chat asking about that yesterday. So then, Edward Snowden. Why have I brought this up? Because Edward Snowden is obviously quite famous and over the last six months, Edward Snowden has been more and more uh, into uh, Bitcoin and being outspoken. Good morning, Danny. Uh, this doesn't bother me. If the, SE, if the SEC keeps acting in bad faith like this, they're going to lose so hard in court that they'll never be able to do this to anyone ever again. Remember when the SEC got spanked so badly that Gensler had to approve the Bitcoin ETFs with tears in his eyes? Exactly. This regulation through enforcement is not the way 
that crypto should be being adopted in America. And Edward Snowden, obviously, he's now living a, a life in Russia because of what he said about America all those years ago. He's now a very big proponent of Bitcoin. He understands debasement. We talked about debasement on the channel before. That's where governments print money. Whenever you hear a government say, oh, the reason that uh, inflation is so high is because of, you know, X, Y or Z, or it's to do with olive oil or it's to do with wheat. The only people in your country that can print money are the government. So if they print 10% of your currency every year, your money in your pocket over time will become worth 10% less every year. That's debasement. You can go and look up any chart. You can go and look up anything to do with deflation and inflation and money printing, and you will find that governments are the reason that money loses value and loses, loses uh, buying power. Max Friedman, I think he was called, um, the other chap, I can't remember his name off, even Larry Fink talks about it, the guy we're going to talk about in a minute. Everybody talks about the same thing and governments print money. It's a hidden tax on your net worth. It's so hidden that if you hide your money under your bed, they still reduce the value of it. That's how hidden it is. And that's just part of life. They've been doing it for years. And what they try and do is they try and balance the amount of money they print with inflation, with how much you earn. And they try and keep it to a point where you don't have too much money to spend because that would drive inflation up. And to do that, they tax you. And then they try and keep the economy going by printing money. And that printing money pays for the, you know, the highways the power stations the you know the military spend whatever that's part of it comes from taxes part of it comes from money printing exactly centralization versus decentralization exactly so barry uh, larry flink not barry flink uh, larry fink says that spot bitcoin etfs are the fastest growing etf in the history of etfs and they are they have outshone every other etf and the problem that that Gary Gensler has got and and President Biden and, and uh, the Democrat Party in power is it's been so successful that it's very difficult now to turn down Ethereum, even though I think they will. It's very difficult for them because these uh, these ETFs are owned by the biggest financial institutions in America and they hold the biggest political sway from uh, donations and everything else and, and whatever. So. If BlackRock wants an Ethereum ETF, BlackRock gets an Ethereum ETF. And that's just how it's going to work. So in, I don't think it's gonna happen in May. I've said it yesterday, I've said it week before. I think it's gonna happen next year. It's not if, but when. And I think the when is going to be next year. And the final X of the day, final X file of the day. And again, another warning. I'm going to keep doing them. I covered Zach XBT pretty much all week. That is this. Someone has received $20 million in less than an hour for an alleged token presale on Solana. So somebody has made 111,000 Solana, $20 million in the space of an hour. They haven't made it in space of an hour. They've made it in space of a few days of pumping this out. And these are pre-sales. This is why I struggle with people buying into a pre-sale because you don't know what you're buying into. Very rarely will I look at a coin that is under a $150 million market cap, very rarely. And if I do, it's because they've got a really noisy community and we can give away the tokens for free. So if I get free tokens and the project is doxxed and the team looks good and everything looks fine, then I'll cover it. But on the whole, I will only cover projects that are really over $100, $150 million simply because of things like this. And these are rug pulls. This is where you pay your money in good faith and they run off with your money and they need to be caught and they need to go to prison. And these people are a drain 
on the reputation of crypto. We spoke a minute ago about the guy, the Solana guy bashing Ethereum. That's a slight on crypto. This is a bigger slight on crypto, especially if you're new to crypto and your friend says to you, oh, listen, if you send these guys one sol, they're gonna sell you $1,000 worth of tokens. You'll go, well, one sol is $170, $180, and I'm gonna get $1,000 worth of tokens, I'll send it. And then people like this run off with your money. And that's why you should be very careful when you're dealing with meme coins. If I talk about a token that you can't buy, that's probably a good reason that you can't buy it because you're on a centralized exchange and they do their due diligence. I can't think of, uh, obviously we've got the Pepe. Um, it wasn't really a rug pull. We had the Pepe devs run off with a big bunch of cash, but it's very rare for a meme coin to get to an exchange, especially the exchange that you're on, it's very difficult for it to get there and then be a rug pull. So there is a, a certain level of meme coin that you can buy on your exchange. And I'm not saying they're all bad, but it, it, the, the rest of them have died before they've got to the exchange. So for that reason, I'm just very wary. Don't If you see links on, on Twitter that say pre-sale here, they could also empty your wallet. So don't connect a wallet that's got your crypto and keep your crypto and centralized, these centralized exchanges you are now, that goes against the grain of what most people will tell you. And I know that, <clears throat> but I would much rather have my money on a centralized exchange with two factor authentication, mobile phone, anti-phishing, all of that in place. I'd rather have my money there than in a self custody wallet that I could accidentally connect to one of these websites and lose everything because it's gone and you're never going to get it back. <clears throat> so let's move on then. So El Salvador adds Bitcoin, adds to Bitcoin stash, now holds nearly $400 million in digital gold. Now we've been covering this since the start. I, I'm going to murder his name. I'm very sorry. Bukele, Bukeleli is the president over there. He's just won the, the, the last election. When he started buying Bitcoin, the IMF went after him and said, we're now going to make your currency a junk rating, credit rating of junk. We're going to say, you, you know, you can't borrow money, X, Y, or Z. He said, fine. He then went and cleaned up his country, arrested all the criminals, and then started to buy Bitcoin. And guess what? They have now got $400 million worth of Bitcoin. And that's not even getting started. So Bukele's administration was previously opaque about its Bitcoin buys. The leader would post on Twitter when he would buy the asset, even boasting he'd snap, up, snap it up naked or in the toilet. But exact figures could not be obtained from the government's press office. And there we go. He has a cold storage wallet where he is storing his Bitcoin, keeping it safe. But as it appreciates in value, remember, the big countries, the big companies, they have a different end goal for Bitcoin. And it's not the same end goal that you've got. Why is Michael Saylor, ask this question, why is Michael Saylor buying all this Bitcoin? Because it's going to appreciate in value. Okay. At what point is he going to cash in? Well, he said, he said, he said himself, he's never going to cash in. He's never going to cash in on his Bitcoin. Okay, so he's never going to sell it. So he's going to sit there with 200,000 Bitcoin, 250,000 Bitcoin and never sell it. Now they're a business, they have to make money. So what do you think countries, Michael Saylor, BlackRock, what do you think they're going to do with Bitcoin? They are going to use it in different financial instruments. They are going to use it as collateral. They are going to use it to create liquidity, Bitcoin liquidity pools amongst nations, amongst big financial institutions. They have a different ball game for Bitcoin than we've got. Totally different ball game. Bukalele is going to borrow against it or he's going to use it as collateral or he's going to uh, lend it. He's going to do many things with it and it will generate them an income in the future, not now. But always think, why are they buying the Bitcoin? What's the end game? The end game for me is they're going to create something beyond what we think that they could create. And that is going to be some kind of financial instrument 
or financial system where they can create revenue from holding this Bitcoin. So he's made a fortune for his country. That's his job. He is a servant of El Salvador, the same way that your president is a servant of you. That's how it's supposed to work. He works for you or she works for you. You don't work for them. So he has been building schools. He's been building hospitals. He's been putting criminals away. He's been doing all the good things and all the things that they need. And he is holding Bitcoin and it's going to appreciate in value. And El Salvador are going to become a very rich nation within the next 10 years. He's got a Bitcoin. I don't think it's Bitcoin amnesty, but he's got a Bitcoin visa. If you hold one Bitcoin, you can have a visa to go and live in El Salvador. You just have to prove you hold one Bitcoin. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot in a minute. What is it? $70,000. But when that becomes a million dollars and you need to hold one Bitcoin to go to El Salvador, then it, you kind of understand what he's doing. Because if he brings in a thousand people who've got one Bitcoin each, that's a billion dollars worth of wealth that has just moved to his country. So think of it like that. Now then, very quickly then, let's switch out of Brogan's charts. They're in some kind of Sanskrit. I don't even think people who study Egyptian hieroglyphics could understand his charts, but there we go. So what happened? I predicted 74,000. What happened? It went in completely the opposite direction and came down here and bounced. So we had a bull pennant. The bull pennant for me was to go to 74,000, target in the bottom right hand corner. We had a breakdown. Now we could possibly look at something like this and say that we're breaking down, but over the night or over the, the, the last few hours, we've broken back out of it again. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna ignore this wick down and we're gonna say that my bull pennant is right and we're gonna go to $74,000. That's my target. Short term target for Bitcoin. You will hear certain crypto influencers who will remain nameless telling you that we're going to be a hundred, we're going to be at a hundred thousand dollars in 24 days time. I think that is totally unrealistic. I think to be at a hundred thousand dollars would be a 50%, roughly a 50% push up from here. That is going some. Now you have to remember going to a hundred thousand from 70,000 requires more money coming into the market than going from say 40,000 to 70,000. So it's going to take an almighty push. I'm not saying it's impossible, but for me, 80,000 is the next target after 74. Uh, lots of other facilities they are providing to BC. Exactly, yes, they are. They are. If you go to El Salvador, I think they're building a Bitcoin city, aren't they? They're building a Bitcoin city in El Salvador. I don't know how that's going to work. And they've also built geothermal, uh, geothermal energy farms in El Salvador, which they're going to attach Bitcoin miners to. So they're going to make their own Bitcoin. It, 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 he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Um, Anyway, we're going to move on. So very briefly, I've still got 74,000. We talked about it yesterday. We did have the wick down. We came back down to this level, which I've put a line on. And as you can see in the last, actually, let me go out a little bit to show you a little bit more where we are. Give me a second. So whenever Bitcoin moves, it finds uncannily it finds places to come down to and it did it came down to these previous levels here and has bounced straight back up so for me i'm still sticking with my 74 and a half thousand target that's a six percent move over the next few days i don't see why we can't do that now we're going to move on half 11 and we're are we halfway through no we're not halfway through why would we be halfway through Let us move on. Good morning, Bab. Welcome to the stream. Ondo Finance is to move $95 million to the BlackRock tokenized fund for instant settlements for its T-bill token. I think I mentioned this last week. BlackRock has created a $100 million fund on the Ethereum blockchain. We've gone over it time again. We're not going to say it again, but basically Ethereum in my opinion, is going to be more of a institution blockchain in the future. 
and Solana is going to be more of a retail blockchain in the future. Yes, we have layer twos that sit on top of Ethereum. They are also going to be retail, but Ethereum itself, I see as a, as a financial blockchain of the future. And that would be a brilliant position for Ethereum to take up, in my opinion. So Ondo Finance has moved 95 million. The allocation marks the first example of a crypto protocol leveraging BlackRock's tokenized fund for its own offering. That's why we mentioned before, I think Ondo is up 11% today. Um, Ondo Finance is shifting backing assets of its OUSG token to BlackRock's build tokenized fund from a less desirable short-term treasury bond ETF. OUSG, I don't even know how you pronounce that, will become significantly more usable with instant around-the-clock subscriptions and redemptions, Ondo Finance CEO said. Tokenized real-world assets, you're going to hear about this an awful lot, real-world assets. And we actually asked Samai about this last night as well. Real-world assets, houses, buildings, paintings, um, oil fields, gold mines, anything that's a real-world asset can be tokenized. There is a whole can of worms associated with the legal side of that, which we're not going to get into, but it's what BlackRock is trying to do. They're basically trying to tokenize the world and own that. If they own the tokenization of assets and everybody uses BlackRock, BlackRock just becomes exponentially bigger than it already is. So this new fund allows instant settlements from its own US Treasury backed token. Uh, Nathan Allman, CEO of Ondo, said on Wednesday in a Telegram interview with Coindesk, until now, Ondo's Oost token was backed by BlackRock iShares, short treasury bond exchange trading fund. They need to think of catchier names. I mean, we've got Wencoin, we've got Pepe, we've got Doge. I mean, they roll off the tongue. iShares, short treasury bond exchange traded fund. It doesn't roll off the tongue. In fact, it eats my tongue. It doesn't do anything for me other than turns it into a tongue twister. So hopefully we'll meet in the middle and they'll come up with better names than these. So the allocation allows Ondo to significantly speed up. We know about this. We don't care about this. What we care about is adoption. BlackRock is moving in to crypto and it's moving in in a big way. And it's not moving in the way that most people thought, which was to buy up all the Bitcoin. They're now going to, they're not going to stop. If BlackRock is moving its its first tokenization project to Ethereum. What does that tell you about BlackRock's belief in Ethereum? It's rock solid. It believes in Ethereum. What has BlackRock applied for? An Ethereum ETF. So it has an Ethereum ETF application. It's built its first fund on Ethereum. BlackRock understands that Bitcoin is a store of value, but it understands that Ethereum can be the financial platform of the future. That's where they're going with this. And as I've said before, I think Vitalik will be made to step down. I do not think BlackRock are going to allow Vitalik to stay the head of Ethereum. He doesn't fit with their profile. Look at other cases. Of, there's plenty of other cases. I'm not going to mention names. We haven't got time. There's plenty of other companies in crypto who've lost their heads. Not Henry VIII style, where they've been locked off, but where they've had to step down or walk away. We've seen it with the SEC. They've, they've, they've said, you can pay this fine and your ex-CEO has to go. And what do they do? They put a yes man in charge. They put a financial man in charge who they can talk to. You can't imagine Larry Fink sitting down at a table with Vitalik Buterin, dressed as a Pokemon, having a serious conversation about the future of tokenizing real world assets. It doesn't work. You need a real person in charge. That's why someone like Brad Garlinghouse at Ripple, from the start, they were a financial institution. From the start, he was a money man. That's how it works. A lot of these exchanges are not run by money men. They're run by crypto nerds, crypto geeks, programmers, people, early adopters, whatever it may, might be. They will have to go and money men will come in. The Winklevoss, uh, Winklevoss twins, they were money men that got into Bitcoin at the start. They look at the size of their organization now. So these things happen. Now, Ethereum is predicted to hit $4,000 again. Here is why. 
There is a very nice AI generated image of what looks like Pyramid Head from Silent Hill swimming against people who all look the same. So Ethereum displayed a bullish market structure on the one day chart. However, buyers were fighting for control and winning at press time. Now, the issue isn't the charts. I'm gonna try and explain why I don't always look at the charts. Ethereum is currently, and we're not gonna bring up Ethereum's chart, I'm just gonna go through it. Ethereum is currently running on the wave of pre-ETF approval. It's it's gone from what, $2,200, $2,000, and ran up to $4,000. It will keep going up over time. It's going to appreciate in value. Remember, Ethereum could get anywhere between $10,000 and $20,000 in the bull run, $25,000 in the bull run. We don't know, we don't have a crystal ball, but that's where it could potentially go to, with or without a ETF with it maybe towards the 20s with an ETF, maybe 10s without an ETF. But this moment in time, it's speculation. And the speculation is it's going to be approved in May. Now, looking at these charts is great, but you have to take them into, sorry, with the, con the context of what we're talking about here. It's all well and good talking about these FIB levels all well and good talking about the price action. And I agree, there are resistance levels, 35.8, 32 was one, 3100 was one, I get all of that. But we need Ethereum to have bullish news for these charts to play out. $4,000 for me is on the cards if Bitcoin goes to $80,000. What happens when Bitcoin goes to $80,000 is the Bitcoin ETH pair people will try and hold on to the coattails. They'll sell Bitcoin to buy Ethereum. Then when Ethereum goes up in value against Bitcoin, they'll sell their Ethereum back to Bitcoin. It's trading against that pair. So Bitcoin can never get too far ahead of Ethereum. Ethereum can never catch up too far against Bitcoin. It's like Bitcoin has this chain and Ethereum is 30 yards behind. And every time Bitcoin goes 40 yards ahead, it drags Ethereum along. And if Ethereum gets too close and the chain gets too loose, then Bitcoin moves away again. It's always at a distance. It used to be you could get uh, 10 Ethereum for one Bitcoin. Then it was 20 Ethereum for one Bitcoin. So that's how the price moves. Now for me, for it to hit $4,000, two things have got to happen. Bullish news on the ETF, then we're at $4,000 tomorrow. Bitcoin goes to $80,000, Ethereum will follow suit and go above $4,000. Those two things will cause Ethereum to go above $4,000. I don't believe that natural market forces are gonna push Ethereum above $4,000 without one of those two things happening. It is not going to move independently of Bitcoin unless the ETF gets approved. And again, if you're dollar cost averaging into Ethereum, not financial advice, carry on doing it. Dollar cost averaging in is probably the least riskiest way of buying into an asset, whether it be Bitcoin, whether it be Ethereum. Just keep doing what you're doing. You'll get a good price over time. Look at Michael Saylor. He's got however many hundred thousand Bitcoin. His average price is what now? $36,000, something like that. And Bitcoin is now worth $71,000. He's nearly doubled his money. Do what the smart people do and dollar cost averaging. And remember, you know, even when we were at $73,000 the other day and I was saying, you know, keep dollar cost averaging in, well, you would have picked up a 73, a 71, a 69, a $68,000 Bitcoin. So if we get to $100,000, your average price of, of your Bitcoin might end up being $75,000. So you're 33% up and you've been buying the dip, you've been buying the top, you've just been buying in on a weekly or a monthly basis and that's the best way to play it and it's not too late to do that we haven't had the halving yet bear in mind the halving is still potentially 20 24 days away from where we are now so you've still got three and a half week, half weeks before the halving we might have a correction if you dollar cost averaging in you'll catch the correction it's the best way to do it now then ada 
good old Ada. I am a fan of Ada. And it is getting pilloried. Absolutely pilloried by everybody. And that, for me, is normally a bullish sign. And the reason it's a bullish sign is that you should buy projects you believe in when they have negative market sentiment. Like I was saying at the beginning of the show, we had that chat, Jake, not gonna blame Jake for this, but Jake picked three coins for you to buy in his article. And what Jake did, and again, this is not aimed at Jake, this is just aimed at general people who talk about crypto in general. Anybody, anybody can go here, click on the 24 hour gainers, and say, right, guys, top three picks of the, of the day. Bitcoin Cash, Dogecoin, and Ondo. Go. And then you all run out and you buy those three tokens because some man on the internet told you it was a good idea. And then, two days later, the coins you were told to buy have suddenly fallen in value. And you're going, but, but Jake, you told me to buy ICP because it was going to the moon. And Jake says, oh, well, it's not financial advice, just an opinion piece. The opinion piece, Jake, was based on you just going to CoinMarketCap and picking the top three coins. It's the worst advice you can give to somebody. It's like telling people to go and buy toilet roll during the pandemic. You're paying 15 pounds a roll, Jake. You buy things before the price goes up. You buy things when those projects are out of the news. I always talk about these, these tornadoes. These coins are tornadoes. You buy this tornado today, and I guarantee you within the next week, this will have retraced five or 10% because people will have taken profits. You are their exit liquidity. Somebody that bought Bitcoin Cash at $400 seven days ago is going to go, you know what, if that hits $600, I'll have made 50%, I'm gonna sell. You're gonna come rushing in and saying, oh my word, it's up It's up a third in a week, I'm gonna buy that coin. And then you buy it at $600, and a few days later it's at $450, and you're scratching your head going, hang on, how did that happen? It happened because you bought the top. So, mini ran over, Cardano is not in the news, XRP is not in the news. If you remember what I was saying to you in November, I said to you that Matic and BNB are not in the news. They're the only two coins in the top 20 that haven't performed. And what happened? On the same day, Matic and BNB both pumped. That is not a coincidence. Cardano and XRP have not pumped. Everything else pretty much has. This is a good time to buy these tokens. These are not bad projects. These are not going to go anywhere. These are not going to disappear. This is not dragon with hat. This is not cat with mouse. This is a solid project with the best proof of stake system the world has ever seen. This is being copied by Ethereum. Charles, the head of Cardano, helped build ethereum he is a clever man you have to appreciate when people know what they're doing just because he's not wearing a pikachu costume or a wizard's hat or wearing a t-shirt that says cardano to the moon doesn't mean this man doesn't know what he's doing if they did have zlatan ibrahimovic as the head of cardano it'd be at 15 dollars because he'd be talking about tigers and lions. They've got Charles who talks about other things which probably don't fit the mainstream narrative. It's at 60 cents. It's a top 10 coin. I don't care what other people are telling you. Nothing about Cardano apart from the speed of development is an issue. And the speed of development is purposely slow when was the last time Cardano went offline? Can you remember? Ethereum isn't posting blocks. Solana's been down in the last few days. XRP 
the, the CTO got hacked a few days ago. I can give you problems with every chain in the top 10, but I can't find a problem with Cardano other than the price. So the price is the problem and it should be higher. I'm not saying it should be at $5 now. I think it should be near a dollar. At this stage of the bull run, by the halving, I think Cardano should be at a dollar. And then I think it's going to 5x or 6x in the bull run, and I think it will get to five, six, and seven dollars. There is no reason for this to be a, a poor performer in the bull run. If it had issues, I would I would tell you what those issues were because I am fairly agnostic. I hold Ethereum, I hold Cardano, I hold Solana. There's no reason for me is that this just hasn't got the charismatic leader in most people's eyes that um, some of the other chains have. And, you know, I like Charles. I think he's a great guy. But we are struggling with the price. Cardano did go up to 80 cents, as this points out, going up that's going to connect them to the Ethereum ecosystem. Two things. They are building out their next release, which will speed things up. They have proof of stake building to all time highs. Everything is positive apart from the price. Now, luckily down here, the article does kind of point in the direction I was talking about. Like the broader crypto market, Cardano looks to be recovering from this recent wave of profit taking, although at a slower pace. For its next leg up, there is a belief that the crypto token could break the $1, $1.40 and $1.50 if it breaks. I don't want it to go that high. I keep saying this about coins. I've said this about Solana. I want these coins to come down in value. I think they're too high, too close to the halving. So I want a correction, not a major correction. I would like to see uh, Solana, for example, at $150. I would like to see uh, what else has pumped recently. AVAX has pumped recently. The AI tokens we're gonna to talk about in a bit have pumped recently. But we, I keep saying this, we don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. We want liquidity going into the halving. Now, what is likely to happen is that Bitcoin is going to suck up all the liquidity. So if you have your Solana and you've, you, you, you see Solana, Solana gets to $200 and you're thinking, you know what, I've got my 100 Solana here, but Bitcoin's about to go into the halving. So what I'm going to do is sell my Solana or half of my Solana and I'm going to buy Bitcoin. What that does is propel Bitcoin up and drains Solana. So Solana might come down to, let's say $100. So suddenly, your $200 Solana has become $300 worth of Bitcoin. And then you go, well, hang on a minute. I can keep my $100 worth of, of Bitcoin and I can go back and buy my $200 worth of Solana, but this time I get two Solana for the price of one. So I go and buy double the Solana and I've still got a bag of Bitcoin. Now, what does that do to Solana? The liquidity shoots out of Bitcoin, which corrects the price slightly and then rips Solana. So like I was saying before about playing the Bitcoin eth Ethereum pair, there will be people playing the Solana Bitcoin pair or the Cardano Bitcoin pair. And that's how money flows around. And what we could see in the next three or four weeks, five, six weeks, we could see money flowing out of vaults, flowing into Bitcoin, Bitcoin ripping up to $85,000. Then, as I've kept saying, if we do have a correction, it's a 20% correction, for example, Bitcoin sells off at 85, it comes down to what? It comes down to 68, dollars $69,000. Meanwhile, Solana absolutely rips to the moon for a period of two months. That's a possibility. Cardano hasn't had that rip. Because it's not had that rip, it's not going to do this, which is what I'm, I'm hoping some of the alts do. What I want to see is I want to see us break. I know it sounds crazy because it's only 66 cents, 
but I want to see us break this 66 cent mark. And then my target, very similar actually, let's just double check. Am I in agreement with this gentleman here? There we go. If it can break out from the 80 cent price range. But I've actually found somebody that agrees with me. So I have a price target here of 79 cents. That's my price target for, Bit, uh, for, uh, sorry, for Cardano to break. If it breaks, it is going to move up probably to around this Fib level for me, which is 113. And then further up, I've got 130. Now he has put 140 and 150. So we're not a million miles away from each other. We've kind of got the same targets. The target for me is 80 cents, 79 cents and $1.30. They're my targets for Cardano. And I would like to see by the halving Cardano around here, which is maybe $1 to $1.13 around this fib level. I would be more than happy, but we have to break. If you look at what's happened with Cardano, we were in the kill zone, which is where you can buy your Cardano, but it beautifully, it sat on this as support, it broke up, it found resistance, it broke down, it bounced, it's beautiful, found, again, found support, found resistance, found support, back at resistance, again, it's beautiful, it's a lovely, lovely chart. Once you, once you apply the fib levels to things, it's a beautiful chart. And I do think 80 cents is the next target. Now, from here, that's a 20% gain. So if you wanted a quick 20% gain, for me on Cardano, as long as Bitcoin doesn't go through the floor, we you should be able to get a 20% gain on Cardano. Remember, find the coins that aren't in the news, find the coins that people are fading. XRP and Cardano, for me, are getting bad press. But those same people that are telling you that XRP are finished, are going to be the same people in a month's time or four months time when the court case is finished and xrp is at one dollar eighty telling you oh you need you need to be buying xrp now because it's going to go to 150 dollars they're the same people they're literally the worst people in the world because they will fade something because it hasn't ripped and then when it has ripped they'll tell you to buy it what you want to do is you want to buy the coins before they get there. That's the point. Don't buy something that's ripped up and blown off the top because all you're going to do, you're still going to make money because over the bull run, it should accumulate in time. But you're not going to make as much money as if you look at the things that aren't in the press. In my humble opinion, not financial advice. I might just have a little note on the bottom of the screen that says, whatever he is saying, it is not financial advice. I've asked Brogan, by the way, to actually make me a song that says, not financial advice, that I can just play constantly in the background. Now then, this is the headline. AI told you so is to do with this incredible, incredible move by FET by Singularity and by Ocean. I cannot believe this has happened so close to when we were talking about it. If you've been watching me for the last year and a bit, I have been telling you that my two picks for AI tokens have been Fetch and Singularity. Because of their market cap, because of their potential, there are obviously bigger AI tokens. I appreciate that. I am not saying anything about ICP or Near or render or any of those coins they were my picks that i physically bought and now as of last night the three of them singularity and fetch my two picks and ocean protocol are going to vote on the 2nd of april to merge they are going to merge and create a new token this will give it a rough combined market cap of 7.5 billion, but we know how these things work. The sum of the parts isn't as great as the whole in this case, and this token is going to pump. So I think we are going to be looking at a $10 billion project, in my opinion. And again, I do think I have yet. Give me one second. 
I have got coin market cap up here. Is it this one? There we go. Right. One second. Again, one of the nice cool features about coin market cap is you can go to the top right hand corner, you can type in a category and it gives you a breakdown. So the top AI token according to coin uh, coin market cap is near coming in at 7.7 .7 billion render is up there so is the graph all the names we've talked about before really don't like big tensor but there we go now then we've got fetch we've got singularity and not too far behind we've got ocean so those three tokens are going to combine and create a new token let's get rid of that now okay so the 20, uh, March 27th announcement, there will be three separate votes, one for each chain. The three of them will vote between now and April the 16th. So that's about what, let's call it for argument's sake, three weeks. In three weeks time, each one will have voted to create a new token, the ASI token. Now, I am gonna make a video about this, but I didn't want to do the show and not include the biggest news of the day which is this in my opinion so the merged token merged token would have a fully diluted market cap of 7.6 billion dollars across the 2.6 billion tokens the three tokens currently combined market cap is 5.3 now if it comes in at 7.6 billion it becomes let's call it the largest the largest ai token in the world and for me as i've said the whole is bigger than the parts so i could easily see this going to 10 billion and i know that isn't moon boy and i know that isn't what, what everybody wants to hear but that's still a 33 percent gain from where we are and i'm not going to sit here and say it's a 50 billion dollar project when we don't know what it's going to do i'm only going off what's going to happen in april so the completion of the voting is april the 16th which means the new token should come into into life around about April the 6th, 17th to April the 25th, for argument's sake. That's exactly when the halving is for Bitcoin. Now, again, coincidence, coincidences don't really exist in crypto that much. They're timing this to hit the bull run. And why wouldn't you? You're gonna hit the bull run with a new token, the largest AI token in the world. Everybody in their regular daily life is hearing the word AI more than they're hearing the word crypto. So they go to the exchange, the exchange that you're on at the minute, and they look at crypto and they go, what can I buy? I can buy Bitcoin because I've heard of that. I can buy Ethereum, I've heard of that. I like frogs, so I'm gonna buy some Pepe, or I like a dog, I like Shiba in you. And then they see a token called Artificial Super Intelligence Alliance token. And they're going to go, oh, AI. Oh, AI is going to do really well in the next 10 years. I'm going to buy some AI token. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what this project does. People will buy it because it's got AI in the title. We saw an example on X, which I've not included today because I had to trim it out, where a company came out and announced that it was going to buy 28,000 Bitcoin. The price absolutely shot up. The shareholders sold. The CEO came out and said, this is a load of lies. We're not going to buy any tokens and the price went to one cent. So just putting the word crypto or AI into a company name will pump it because people will buy it irrespective of what it does. And I, I know we talk about do your own research and people don't on the whole don't. So this is huge news. Now, how is it gonna be converted? Well, FET is gonna be one-to-one. -one. So if you hold one FET token, you will get one ASI token. Now. The other two, Singularity and Ocean, as far as I'm aware, are going to get 0.4 and 0.5. About that. There we go. So 0.433 and 0.433 for Ajax and Ocean. If you have Ocean and Ajax tokens on an exchange, no action is needed. We will work with each exchange to ensure a smooth conversion and your holdings will automatically be converted to ASI tokens directly. By the exchange, you won't see Ocean or Ajax on the exchange, but don't panic, your tokens are there. Just look for the ASI symbol. And the other thing they're gonna do, which I like as well, is they are doing a swap. So if you hold, there we go, this is it. Oops. 
If you hold your Ocean and Ajax on your MetaMask wallet, for example, you will be able to do a swap indefinitely. So even if you hold the Ocean and Ajax tokens and you forget about them and you find them two years down the line, you're still going to be able to swap them for the ASI token. Good news, in my opinion. So the Super Intelligence Alliance will share the common goal of developing blockchain-based decentralized AI protocols which can't be controlled by centralized parties or large stakeholders. Now, this, in my opinion, is in direct action against uh, Sam, Al Sam Altman. Sam Altman basically sold his soul to Microsoft. There's no way to cut it. That's what he's done. He took an open source AI project and he sold it to Microsoft. Elon Musk is suing him because Elon Musk was an early stage investor in the project. And we don't want Microsoft, Google, Apple. We don't want any one entity controlling something as big as AI. It's too powerful for any one person to control or even one group of people to control. So by doing this and having some mechanism in place which, which stops centralized control, it's a good thing. Imagine if we had AI-based censorship. What censorship would it follow? And again, it's not a debate for now, and it is my final thought. If you've got, the, um, if you've got America, for example, and America is in charge of AI censorship on all the social media platforms, then you get Americans' version of reality. If you gave it to the EU, you would get the EU version of reality. If you gave it to somewhere in Singapore, you might have a Singaporean version of reality. Now, I'm not saying one of them is wrong and one of them is good. What I'm saying is, you know, we, we'll go back, we'll use semantics here. His story is history. It's his story. AI cannot and should not be allowed to be controlled by any third party in any way, shape or form. AI has to be neutral, it has to be fair and it has to be outside of censorship. Otherwise, it fails in its central core mission, which is to provide factual based information. And that cannot be censored. And there's issues with this left, right and center we talked about Fetch and Singularity coming together to try and solve hallucinations. Hallucinations are where AI goes 2 plus 2 equals 7 point B. And it says, right, give me a picture of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And it goes away and it comes back and it shows you a picture of Shrek combined with Boris Johnson. Because it's hallucinated the answer. It hasn't given a factual based response. That's a problem that needs solving. They're working on it. So, in my opinion, AI, and if we're going to extend that, social media platforms need to be without political censorship. I am not saying that we should have a free-for-all. I am not saying that we should, be allow we should allow everybody to say what they want. I'm saying that you cannot censor AI because it then has so many negative connotations on society you could end up in a very bad place. Anyway, it is 12.04. We have got to the end of the show and it's been a good show. I've already made a video about Zeus Network. I'm going to make a video about this in a minute, about Fetch and Singularity combining. I'm gonna make that video in a minute. And I might also make a third video today, depending on how much time I've got, but a big thank you to you all. Thank you for coming. Give me one second. I'm terribly sorry. My shopping has arrived. I've got to go. Uh, hi, Flip Those Cryptos. Nice to see you. I will see you all probably in the morning, but take care. I'm going to drop a box now. Thank you for watching.